I realized that when I came up with this term, unapologetically Bajan, that I only came up with it a few years ago when I became a filmmaker. But I've been an unapologetic Bajan for as long as I could remember. Now, I love my country, but I really didn't realize how much of it I took for granted until I went overseas to study when I went to Birmingham. And the thing I miss most, things I miss most, were the warm Bajan smiles and the common courtesies. Now, you all, you all know how we Bajans get when people don't speak. Because, um, good evening, everybody. Well, what I did basically to make up for that was I smiled at everybody and I gave them a warm Bajan greeting as I met them. And that unapologetic Bajan attitude worked. It worked well because I made a lot of friends. I made a lot of friends from all over the world. And my flat became the liming spot. There were Bajans, Bajans were coming from as far as London, 200 miles away, just for the lime. And you know, the plus was, I actually got to hear more of that Bajan accent that I so loved. Now, I really, really love my Bajan accent. Um, you, can, you, can't, you really can't beat it. Our dialect is the first thing that identifies us. And one interesting thing, is that our, when I speak Bajan, my British friends can understand me better than they can understand each other because they have so many diverse dialects. I remember as a child growing up, I would be corrected and chastised for speaking Bajan. I, I'm sure some of you in here can identify with that. That was a part of our post-colonial British education. Now, that wasn't bad. That was an excellent education. In fact, around that time, we were ranked second in the world when it came to the second most literate country in the world. And that education put me in good stead in my studies in the UK. Now, I formally studied visual communication, but my passion was really about absorbing culture. I mean, I traveled places in Russia, travel through Europe. I visited West Africa. And the more I learned about their cultures, the more I saw value in my own Bajan culture. So I came home with all that energy, ready to make Barbados a better place and ready to change the world from Barbados. But I had some more learning to do. I had to learn the culture of doing business in Barbados. I remember my first big project. Well, at that time, it was a big project. Uh, it was designing an exhibition to promote corporate Barbados in North America. And I remember I had to present to three senior government officials. And I presented and. There was a resounding approval. It was approved. But then it was even more excited because I found a local production company that can produce the work at a higher quality and a lower cost than the US company that they wanted to, to contract. And there I was, I, I, not expecting that they would say no to supporting local enterprise. Not except, I'm not expecting that they would say no to spending less foreign currency, but they did. And I went to battle. I unapologetically was persistent. And I didn't stop until the local provider was awarded and deservedly so awarded that contract. Now, that was really not the last time that I had gone through that in, in my years of doing business. You know, being a creative entrepreneur in Barbados is not an easy thing. But there are positives. Bajan vis visionaries do exist. And in 20 years I've been in business, or 20 plus years, I've met and worked with 
many visionaries who, who were Beijing. But in that time, there were also the gatekeepers. Now, the gatekeepers are the ones who make it their business to stifle ingenuity and creativity. Those are the ones who benefited from the free education just to get that qualification, then to get a job, then to get a position of influence. A position of influence that would basically impede us, impede any progress when it comes to, when it comes to anything um, in Barbados in terms of progressing. Now, I remember um, recently, well, not so recently, about three or four years ago, consulting on a project that involved cricket. And it was during that time that I realized that we really and we urgently need to stop the academic masturbation. We really need to move past that and put our knowledge into productivity. The country really needs that. I mean, look at Barbados. We're the home of the greatest cricketers that ever lived. We are the mecca of the cricketing world. 2.5 billion people. Now, you believe that we don't tap into that? It would take, it would take some, some simple plans, and, and we need to plan, and we need to come up with some concepts, and we need to come up with a structure to tap into that market. If we could just tap into that market, we could turn around our sports industry. We could turn around our tourism industry. It would benefit our manufacturing industry. We can turn this economy around. We've got 2.5 billion people who want to come here, who want a piece of this rock. Our education is supposed to lift a veil. But I find the education in Barbados has reached a point where it is maintaining a veil, a veil that is stopping us from seeing and reaching our true potential. Speaking of potential, three years ago, I joined forces with two brilliant entrepreneurs, creative entrepreneurs, and we formed a film company. And we created three full feature films in 18 months. And two, those, the first two of those films are, have been, are in distribution in the US, online, and in stores. The first of those films opened to a soda audience, cinema audience in Barbados, and ran for 13 weeks to packed audiences, to pack numbers, 13 weeks straight. And you know, if we thought that we had to go through those gatekeepers, that would never have happened. And if we listened to the naysayers that said, you can't make a Beijing film, and, and, and it'd be successful at home. You can't make a Beijing film to be successful abroad. It would never happen. We don't make our films just for Barbados or for the diaspora. That was never our vision. We make unapologetically Beijing films for the world. In this 50th year of our independence, if we need to celebrate our independence, what we need to do is to first get rid of those gatekeepers. We need to shed all of the remnants of this post-colonial, all the post-colonial values that have been ignoring our Beijing identity. Because if we could do that, we will be able to see that the real value lies in every single one of us. And we would know that together, we have the knowledge and we have the means to build a successful, productive, and globally competitive Barbados. Now I'm going to end with the words of our father of independence, the right excellent Earl Walton Barrow. We must be friends of all and satellites of none. You can't get more unapologetically Beijing than that.
Thank you.